Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to this uh, repair dash restoration of this Kenwood KR5030. And I've got some good stuff to report. I've got the dim bulb tester on and I've got it on FM mono, which we know is working. And there it is. This thing has moved. Speaker A. We try and get some voice. There we go. Right channel. Left channel. So our two channels are working perfectly now. And the reason for that was pretty simple. Actually, I think it was pretty simple. It was a combination of cleaning all the switches, as I've mentioned before. Uh, this one was giving us some intermittence as well. Uh, on both channels, in fact, it was sort of jumping around, so that was cleaned a few times. But more importantly, that uh, relay, the output relay over here, I removed that. That is usually the cause of a problem on one of the outputs. And the way I found out is I bashed it. You know, you take a stick and you just knock it, and the channel would come in occasionally. Uh, so I figured, okay, got to remove that. I removed it. I actually desoldered it from the underside and uh, pulled the lid off, cleaned it up properly. It was pretty grubby and put it back and now it's working perfectly well. Okay, and what else have I done? Well, I've done quite a bit more than I promised to do. Since I had to remove and move a lot of stuff and test a lot of stuff, I recapped the power supply, cleaned up the board, and since I was there, I decided to go here. So I cleaned up this board as well. And I did a full recap. Let's see if we can zoom and focus in there. So recapped that. So that thing is now completely done. That's all the audio. And here we have the offending relay. So all that has been done. Everything to do with audio has been done. Well, not really. That there is the phono uh, preamp section, which I haven't got to yet. But other than that, all the audio is done. So I did some testing. I put a sine wave in left and right. It's working perfectly well. All the channels are coming in. But with the exception of uh, FM stereo, as I mentioned before, and I checked all the transistors. Those are perfectly fine. The only uh, adjustment I can make here is actually to the bias. And it's pretty simple. You connect on there, you connect a uh, millivolt meter or a volt meter to the two emitters of the transistors or you can actually connect them down there as well. Uh, the service man manual tells you where to connect them and you're trying to get 15.5 millivolts, which I think uh, that 15.5 millivolts you're measuring across those two emitter resistors over there, which are 0.22 ohms each. So it works out to something like, uh, what is it, 35 milliamps? And I'm not sure what we're getting at the moment. So I removed the cover off here. I had to remove it anyway to clean up the transistors. And I'm going to put the voltmeters on there and we're just going to adjust that so we can get cracking with the uh, radio section, which is still causing a problem. The same problem, FM stereo is not coming through. But we can put this part to bed, which is what I'm going to do. By the way, I did test the voltages coming out of that board. They're all fine. There are quite a few voltages, 47 minus 47, 25 minus 25. And I think one of them is 14. They're all okay. So we're good to go. Those two big uh, capacitors are in perfect condition. I measure them for value and ESR, and they are like new, so no reason to change them. So this thing has been switched on for a little while. Forget about the polarity, that's not important. It's the actual voltage I want to look for. I want 15.5, and it looks like this thing is biased a little bit hot. I want to bypass the dim bulb tester because it does affect that. So I've now got about 228 volts going in, which is basically the full line voltage. It's just got the isolation supply there. And as you can see, it's still sort of creeping up. So I'll leave it for a while, let it warm up. The volume is supposed to be on zero. We do have audio, but it's supposed to be on zero. So I'll leave it for a while and they're pretty balanced as you can see but I then will adjust it to about 15 volts, millivolts on either side. I think I can actually do a bit of an adjustment now. I'm using a ceramic screwdriver. 
Oh, wrong way. There's 15.1. This one goes the other way. Interesting. This thing is jumpy. This thing is really erratic, this guy. Let's see what happens from there. It's still sort of creeping up. You have to be patient. Actually, it's creeping down, but we'll let it, let it settle and then adjust it a bit more. As long as we get it around 15 millivolts, we're good. And that'll settle and I'll do a quick check in a little while. So our audio section is completely checked and it's time to carry on with this. I see this one is still... Anyway, as I said, I'll let it settle for a while and do the adjustment. Close up the lid on the output transformer uh, heat sinks over there and then we'll be ready to start on the radio section. And this section here, I think there's no point me uh, bothering too much with it until I've recapped. So I'm going to just do all the recapping and come back and see what we can discover. See if we've got the FM stereo back by some miracle. I don't think so, but we'll check. We'll check the AM. We can do the alignment for the AM and then just keep digging and uh, finding out why the FM is not working so well. Well, as expected, the recapping of the uh, radio section has not resolved the problem of the FM. Let me show you. That's FM mono. I haven't got an antenna in, but the stereo signal is completely deaf. I have determined something, but I'm going to go through this procedure. Uh, so what I've done is I've got a scope and I got it to the output of the switch and I found nothing when I had it on FM stereo. Then I went to the, um, the signal path coming out of the IC of the chip and I checked whether I had a signal uh, before the muting circuit and I did. There's actually audio on the left and right just before the muting circuit, but the muting circuit is activating um, and not deactivating. In other words, there's uh, mute on when you've got it on FM, it's supposed to come out of mute when it detects a strongish signal and it's not coming out of mute. So our FM is actually working, sort of, the stereo, but it's not releasing the mute um, option. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep hoping for the best. And that is I'm going to do an alignment of this uh, following the instructions. And just, just maybe we will be able to get this thing Maybe there's something wrong with the alignment and it's not detecting the stereo carrier well enough or something like that. So, you know, it's not telling the system that um, there's a stereo signal on there. Um, mm, I'm still not sure that's the problem, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the alignment procedure. So far, what we've done is we've done the audio section here, which is just biasing adjusting the bias to 15.5 millivolts, that's no problem. So we'll get rid of the other stuff that seems to be quite easy. And the next stage is the IF alignment for the AM section and the tracking for the AM section. So what do they tell you to do? They tell you to feed a one kilohertz signal. It's fed into the antenna and there's a 400 hertz or an audio tone modulated 30%. You set the tuning to one kilohertz and then you check the output. And the way they tell you to do this is to take your signal from the record out. In other words, from the tape record out, put it on the scope and adjust CF4 for maximum deflection. So that's fair enough. That's easy enough to do. 
The next one we'll do is we'll set it to we'll set a signal send a signal of 600 kilohertz, also with an audio tone on it, tune to 600 and adjust the L1, L11 rather coil 11 and the bar antenna for maximum deflection, and then we'll move to the top of the band 1400 kilohertz, same story, and you adjust CT4 and 5 for maximum signal. So that seems very easy enough. So let's get to it. Let's just see where we are on this. Um, B and D, B and D, C, F, G, 4. So B, there's B. Scope goes to record out. And where is D? D is a signal coming in. Your signal comes into the AM antenna. That's fine. So you send the signal into the AM antenna through a dummy antenna and you take it off the record out. And the one we need to adjust is CFG4. That's that one there. See that? It's that guy over there. And then the other one is L11. L11, LG11, that's the one next to that, and the AM, uh, the ferrite antenna. And the one on the 1400 is CT4 and 5. CT4 is, where is that? That's there. Comes across here. Oh, it's the second one. And 5 is the last one on the, um, those are those trimmers on top of the uh, tuner. Okay, let's set this up. So we set this guy to one megahertz. We'll modulate it 30% with a 400 hertz tone and we'll activate that. That's coming into the uh, attenuator here. We can activate the antenna. This is going to the AM antenna in the back. Now I'm going to tune to one megahertz. There it is. Okay, I'm going to put the volume down. We don't need to hear it because this thing's coming out of the record out. And now all I need to do is adjust that appropriate one. Let's see what have we got here. Ah. Not much difference. There's a down, it goes up, down. Yeah, it's spot on. There's not much adjustment. It's not too obvious, but um, okay, let's do the next one. The next one is 600 kilohertz. And we'll put some sound on. I'll tune to 600. It's spot on. It's absolutely spot on. So I'm not sure that I need to do anything there. Or maybe I'll just try and maximize it. Let's see if I go to LG 11. That's the best it's going to get. There's actually an adjuster on the ferrite antenna as well, which is really stiff, and I don't see any difference. Well, that's going to stay like that because that's about as good as it's going to get. Now they say 1.4 megahertz. Okay, tuned to 1.4 megahertz. That's pretty good, but let me try and adjust it. And it was second and fourth. Okay. Yeah, doesn't see much difference, do you? Oh yeah, that one is. That's it. Okay, guys, we've adjusted the uh, 
we've uh, aligned the AM. Let's just, let me show you what I've done. All I did was um, the IF that one megahertz, I adjusted this one. Then I set it to 600 kilohertz and I adjusted that one. And then I set, and the ferret antenna at the back there, which we didn't see any change on. Then I put it to 1400 and we adjusted that one there and that one there. And that's it. It's done. Okay. Now the FM is going to be a little bit more sneaky. But fortunately, I've got that stereo signal generator, which is what I'm going to use. Now, you may recall I did a review on this device. It's a, a stereo signal generator and uh, it's a 75 ohm device. We've got a 75 ohm input at the back, but um, this was quite a strong signal. Uh, the, I think the minimum is like um, 88 dB uh, microvolts, and I think you need about 60 for this. So what I managed to get with these attenuators, now this is that system, that particular system, which I can't remember what it's called, but you plug that in there and you can create a number of attenuation levels. One is 15 dB. This one is, what did I get? 10 dB. And here's another one, 6 dB. Okay, so I can actually put these guys in series together. So I've got 15 plus 10, 25 dB plus 6, 31 dB is what I can get out of this. So I'm going to start with the highest attenuation, meaning I'm going to put all of them in a row. And you can do this. Let's see if I can push that in properly. <laughs> it looks like it's got an antenna now. Okay, and I'm going to take that signal and I'm going to feed it to the 75 uh, ohm input uh, antenna and then I'll see what the instructions tell us to do. We're now going to do this section, and they say you use connections A and B, 95 megahertz at 60 dB, 1 kilohertz modulation tone, 75 deviation, all right, receiver set to 95. You record out, or you get the signal from the record out jack on the scope, and you adjust LG5 for maximum deflection, okay? So 95 megahertz, now, from our uh, sub-3, ELV sub-3, what I've got here is I've got um, 88 dB microvolts. That's the minimum it'll go. I have two attenuators. I've got the 15 and the 10 uh, dB. So I've got 25 dB attenuation. I've got it going through a dummy antenna into the 75 ohm uh, socket. What else do we have here? We've got... Um, Stereo signal for now, the limiter is on. I've got the one kilohertz tone here. Deviation is, well, 77, not a problem. We don't need this RDS, so it'll be 75. And I've got the RF on, okay? And if we look at the scope, there's our RF, we've got it. And I've got it tuned to 95. If I tune off, there it goes. So I'm going to put it exactly, it's not quite on 95, it's just a little bit high. So I'm going to put it exactly on 95. And I'm going to adjust LG5. And LG5 is, where is LG5? LG7, do, 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 there, that one. So it's that guy there. Bloody hell. LG5, oh, I can see it, yeah. I'm going to adjust that, and that is LG5 is the FMIF. Okay, makes sense. And if I'm not mistaken, what actually happens is slightly different. You actually, you actually have to get it on signal. I'll try that. I don't think that it's like the, as I thought. You've got to actually tune to it. If it's slightly off, it's slightly off, but you tune to it there, and then you adjust it for the max, and it's not much difference that I can see. It's sort of peaked. Okay. <laughs> if it's working. Right, now, next one. Same story, and on the T-meter, that is on the uh, 
signal strength meter or the yeah, T meter, make the point of position center. So LG, that's a tuning meter, LG7. Now remember, that's the one that was not working. So LG7, it's that middle one over there. I'm going to just look at it. Is it the middle one? Yeah, I'm going to look and I'm going to just set it and it's adjusting and you can't see that, but it's there. I've done it. All right. Uh, I'm not too comfortable with this, what I'm doing here. Same story here, 95. Maximum deflection, minimum distortion. It's exactly the same. LG8. Maximum deflection, minimum distortion. What exactly am I doing here? Let's see what LG8 is. LG8. LG8 is the FMIF. Okay, that's that one there. Now that would make sense that you want minimum of the best sine wave. I don't have a, a meter here, but you want the best sine wave and the maximum deflection. So, my bad, I forgot to put that on. This thing really went a bit crazy, but it's too crazy. This thing's coming right out of the core. I'm not too comfortable with that. Oh, there's a peak. Yeah, there is sort of a peak there. I think that's it. Okay. I think that's it. Next. Outputs. 95. Uh, I won't worry too much about that because that's just to make sure you get the right sensitivity. Tracking, 90 megahertz. So we change that to 90. And we do LG1, 2, and 3. So where is LG1, 2, and 3? LG1, 2, and... LG1 is that guy inside there. Yeah, okay. LG1, LG2 is the one next to it. Okay, faster. And where's three? Did I get that right? At 90, 90 megahertz. Okay, let's set that to 90. One, two, and four. Idiot. Oi. LG1, LG2, and LG4. Okay. One, two, and four. That's at 90. Okay, let's set it to 90. Let's see. LG1. And very little change. That's about as good as it's going to get. That's at 90. Okay. Next. That was at 90. At 105. CT 1 to 3. So we'll set that to 105. Hundred 
and 5, okay. CT123, where is that? One, that's that middle one. That's the cap one. Two is the first one. Three. First and third, okay. One, first and third, all right. Go up to 105. Go up to 105. It's there somewhere. Yeah, it's there. Slightly off tune. I can hear it. Just put the sound down. So we'll start at the front there. Man, talk about sensitive. That is sensitive. That's that one. That makes no difference. Did I do the right one? Yep, I did. And three. I don't get anything out of that. So it seems to be done. Uh, that's 105. Let me go back to, what is it, 90? Set it to 90 again. We'll go down to 90, see how close we are. Yeah. All right, that's done. What else do they want? Let's see. That's the tracking. Now the VCO. Okay, now A, 95. So we set that guy to 95. Okay. Zero deviation, so no modulation, in other words. So basically, we mute it. I presume that's what they're talking about. We're muting all the sound, so zero deviation. And I presume we're talking about stereo. And 95, frequency count on test point one, VRG1 count indicates 19 kilohertz. Okay, I have to set the, let's see what we've got. We've got this on 95, okay. Let me go to 95 and see if we've got something there. Actually, let me put this mute off. So we'll go back to 95. Okay, got the tone there. Ha! Brilliant! Stereo's working! I don't believe this. Oh, that is brilliant. Ha! 
Well, I wasn't expecting that. That I was not expecting. What have I done? My stereo is working. The stereo light is on. Oh, bloody hell. Well, this deserves a break. I'll be right back. What they're telling us to do now is to set the frequency count on that test point. There's a little um, point over there and adjust this guy till we get 19 kilohertz. Well, I don't believe I can get better than that. So I'm just going to leave it. That's 19 kilohertz to me. And the last two is separation and distortion. But because I don't have a distortion meter, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to assume that's pretty good. So I'm leaving those two alone. I've got a very good sine wave coming out of there. My stereo is working. See that? Off. On. Ah! And I got a feeling it had to do with the adjustment of the, uh, the tuning meter. Because that guy was completely off. And I presume that um, whatever activates the muting is the signal that you adjust for the uh, center tune over there. Which is brilliant. We've got FM and we've got FM stereo. I think that's about it on adjustments. And I must admit, this thing has come in really useful. useful and um, I've got a feeling it'll work just as well without these attenuation uh, steps. 15 and 10, 25 dB. I got a feeling that if I put it straight through there, uh, the uh, through the pi attenuator, and um, I step it up or attenuate 25 dBs, I got a feeling I'll get exactly the same thing. And it'll certainly be a lot easier than working with these two stuck on here. But this thing's worked pretty well. The only comment I can make is this thing, the fact that this thing has got the app, it's, it's brilliant. It works perfectly. It makes it a lot easier to adjust everything I want on here. I mean, you could do it with these, but it certainly makes it easier. What isn't easier is actually filming this. I mean, filming this is much, much harder than doing it because I'm trying to get uh, on camera what I'm doing. And then I'm trying to get on camera over there uh, what's on the scope, which I can actually see on there. And I want to show you on camera over there what's on here. So that's probably the biggest difficulty I had. This is the first time I've actually really used this. Um, as I said, much easier to use than to display. So um, I'm really happy. I am really, really happy. I'm really happy. Ha! Ah, I think you could notice that. Let's have a look at the result. So here we are. We've got this on. It's working perfectly over there. Everything on center. <laughs> and we've got, this is on FM Mono, stereo. And it mutes in between stations, you see that? There aren't many stations that I can pick up here in stereo. It's weak, but... See here, I'd probably listen to that on mono because it's not a very good signal. Brilliant. Yes. And of course, if we want mono, Some of them up here are weak, but it's still trying to capture. So our uh, FM stereo is working perfectly now. FM mono is working perfectly. The AM is working. Uh, we don't get much here, but I tried it last night with the uh, mini whip and it picks up exactly the same as I do normally on, on tube radios, actually. Let's just do that again. Ah, this thing sounds good. This thing sounds really good. Can't play that for long because of copyright. 
Now all I need to do is close this up and it's done. It's done. I'm going to do a bit of cleanup on the front here because I haven't done that and at the back and the, and the lid and I'll show you the final result as soon as it's uh, complete, which is very soon. And finally here she is. All done. And all working. I really am pleased with this for various reasons. And one of them is the fact that I got to use my uh, stereo signal generator and it works beautifully. Watch out for copyrights. Beautiful. Where's talk radio when you want it? Okay, this one's done. I'm happy with it. And um, it was not something I expected to have too much of a problem with, but uh, it did pose a couple of challenges, which I'm glad I was able to sort out. It would have been a bit embarrassing if, uh, if I hadn't. And um, I think I learned a couple of things as well. I think I realized that if you offset the, uh, the alignment of the tuning meter, you're probably going to activate the muting as well, because I think what happens is that when this thing gets to the middle, it's detecting the strongest signal. And when it detects a strong signal, that's when you want your muting to go off, which means that uh, it's in tune. Well, that's it for now. That's the end of another restoration. A short one, <laughs> sort of. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. Just uh, a note, the likes and all that stuff does help with the YouTube algorithm. I'm hearing more and more people mention that. I guess it must be true. Makes sense. So if you do like this video, click like below. And I'll see you back soon for another video. Don't know what it is yet. You'll find out when I do. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.